Hello, welcome to the third lecture of Archline XP Intermediate Course, the Importing Architecture Plans Workshop. Let's get started. I'm starting a new project. We can import the floor plan provided by the architect into the program and then use it to create the 3D model. The creation time depends on which method we choose and the format of the imported file. The floor plan can be an image, PNG or JPG format, a PDF, geometry or raster image. We can also import a DWG drawing, an IFC model or a Revit file. As we progress through the sequence, the faster the plan is processed. Let's start importing the image. File menu Import Raster Image command. I select the Importing Architecture Plans, then GPG folder and import this image. In the pop-up dialog, the properties of the image are displayed. We can change these, of course, but what is important to check is what kind of layer the image will be placed on. This will be on the raster image layer. I accept the settings and then place the image on the floor plan. It is always recommended to place it close to the origin. After the first click, pressing Enter will place the image at its original size. The imported image is not scaled, so we need to calibrate it. First, let's look at the current dimensions of the image. I choose the Dimension Measure Distance command. I measure the 1100 mm section. I click on the start and the end points of it. This section is currently 75 mm, so it is definitely not a scaled plan. Let's calibrate it. I click on the image and choose Calibrate from the local menu. I have to select points of the picture that I know. For example, let's look at this 3000 mm dimension line. I zoom in, select its first point, then the second. I have to write in the actual size, which is 3000 mm. I accept it, then check the accuracy of the calibration. This time selecting the measure command from the quick toolbar. Let's see if the calibration was successful. Yes, it is exactly 3000 mm. It is also advisable to check a dimension in the horizontal direction. Let's look at the 1300 mm measurement. This is also correct. If I zoom out, I can see that the picture is a bit angled. I will correct that. I draw a vertical line using the drafting line tool. I start from this corner point and draw the line upwards. The green guideline will help me draw the straight line. I color it red and wait in it to make it more visible. We can see the reference and the red actual line form an angle. Clicking on the image, I select the rotate marker and within that the rotate from option. I select the center of rotation, then the first angle leg, which is the end of the reference line, and then the end of the red auxiliary line. Now the lines overlap completely. I delete the auxiliary line and I start working on the plan. I start by drawing the walls. Let's set the properties of the wall. I right click on the wall command and select the properties menu. I rewrite the wall thickness to 200 mm. I click on the name of the current style and then on the new button and save it as one layered 20 wide wall. I select it to be available in all projects. So we will be able to use this wall style not only in this project, but in all our future projects. I activate the style and start drawing the walls. We can switch to another wall style from the side menu at any time. Always pay attention to the position of the wall reference line, which is marked in blue. We can change this in the menu above or by pressing the space button. I start drawing the walls. If we know the length of the wall, we can write it in, or we can simply draw around the floor plan. By pressing shift button, we can lock the direction. This will help us with the editing. I'm back to the start point, so I finished working on the first plan. Let's have a look at it in 3D. I'm going back to the floor plan.
Our next topic will be importing PDFs. Let's see how we can distinguish between the two types of PDF. There are two PDFs in the course folder. Let's look at the first one. Zooming in, I can see that the lines are broken up. This means it is a PDF as an image. If we look at the second one, the drawing is clear, even after zooming in. So it is a PDF geometry. Before importing, it is definitely worth checking which version we will be working with. I go back into the program and open a new project. I import the raster image PDF first. The PDF import properties are displayed. First, I have to specify whether this file is a raster image or vectorized. I select raster image. I then need to set the resolution. It is advisable setting a higher resolution to get a good quality image. If we have imported the PDF with multiple pages, we can choose which page to use. I accept it and place it near to the origin. After the first click, I use Enter to place it at the original size. Let's do a measurement. I measure the horizontal side of the room. This is 4200 mm according to the dimensions and 3970 mm on the floor plan. So we need to calibrate as we did with the previous picture. Right mouse button, calibrate command. I enter two points and then distance between them, which is 4200 mm. I also check the accuracy of the calibration. I got the right values, so I worked accurately. Then we can start processing the plan in the same way as we did for the image. I will not repeat this now. I'm starting a new project. I use File, Import PDF command and select the second PDF. I choose to vectorize the data. I can set whether to display the solid fields in the PDF after importing. If so, I can convert them to hatching. I can set to apply line weights too. This means that the program can handle line thicknesses from another program. We won't deal with this now, so I'll turn it off so that we only see one kind of line thickness. Also, I will not display the fields. I can also set which page I will use in case of a PDF with multiple pages. The preview of the floor plan appears, where we have to set the scale factor with selecting the units of measurement in which the file will be imported. The ruler will help us with this. We can see that when I set the meter, the total floor plan will be about 20 km, which is not realistic. I change it to millimeter. So the floor plan is only 20 meter wide. I accept the settings. In the pop-up dialog, I select to place with a new drawing origin. Then I press OK. I start with a measurement here too. Let's look at the length of the outer wall. There is almost 40 millimeter difference between the plan and the reality. I'm not going to correct this by calibration but by scaling. From the Edit Move menu, I select the Scale option. I need to select the group to scale. I press Enter to accept and specify the scaling center, which should be the bottom left corner of the group. I can also specify the amount of scaling graphically, but I will enter a value in order to ensure accuracy. In the floating menu, I click on Scaling and then type the value command. I enter the scale using the measurement I just made. So I enter 1377 slash 1373. I don't need to calculate this. The program can handle the formulas. I accept. I will make a control measurement. Now the size is correct. I've already mentioned that it's a group. By selecting the local menu, I can edit the elements of the group. I can delete a line or add new lines. 
After editing, the group must be closed using the local menu, close group command. We can see that the drawn rectangle has become part of the group. The PDF has been imported, so its elements are on separate layers. Let's look at this in the layer manager. We see its layers at the layer filters section. However, if we look at the PDF itself, it will be on layer zero. It can be distracting to be able to select a group when working. Let's look at how we can lock this down. I go back to the layer manager and lock the layer zero at the used layers. Going back to the floor pen, I can still select the group. But what could be the problem? We just saw the elements of the PDF are not on the layer zero. So I don't need to turn off layer zero, but all the layers of the PDF. I right click on it and lock it. Now I can't select the group. We have the possibility to put all elements of the PDF on one layer. In the layer manager, I unlock the layers and then click on the PDF to turn on the force layer option. Going back to the layer manager, we can see that only layer 0 is displayed at the used section. This is already logged, so I won't be able to select the group. Let's start creating the plan. The thickness of the wall is not dimensionized on the floor plan. But that's fine, because we can take advantage of the property of the, the geometry PDF. Using the building wall was on DWG drawing command, I can very easily draw around the floor plan. First, I need to specify the point near the start of the wall, then the point near the end, and finally the thickness of the wall. This is how the first wall is created. I'll draw all the others. I select the point near the start, the point near the end, and the thickness. So I can create walls easily with three clicks. It is okay if the walls are not connected. I can modify them afterwards with the wall connection commands. Here I choose L connection. I specify one wall then the other, and I just connect them. By the way, connection walls work in 3D as well. Just like I did in the 2D view. I select the first wall, then the second wall, and I'm done. I go back to the floor plan and make two partitions. Let's make this one. The other will be the wall between the bedroom and the bathroom. I'm going to connect these with the T connection. First I click on the stem of the T, then on the arm. I'm going to make this wall projection and this niche. I select the wall and select the component mode. I click on the line of the wall and insert a node. Then use the offset option to move the wall segment. Now let's look at how to make a niche. Again, I choose the component mode and insert four nodes, which I align to the right points. The niche is done. The next step will be to install the windows and doors. I will start with the door. I don't need to preset its dimension in the properties window, as I'm going to place it graphically with two points. I will specify the first point and then the second point. With that I've specified the width of the door. I still need to specify the opening direction. With the door selected in the side menu, I'll change the distance from the wall to zero so it doesn't hang out of the wall. Next, I place windows. I select the option window by two points. The window should always be placed on the inside of the wall. I also change the distance from the wall to 400 mm. I place another window. I won't be able to place this on the inside wall as there is a chamfer here, so I place this on the outside wall. Let's look at in 3D why it's not a good idea to place the window on the outside wall and how we can change it once we placed it there. The first window is in place, but the second window is facing outwards. I will have to mirror this. 
I can mirror it here or in the 2D. I step back to the floor plan to look at its plan sign. Above, we see the scale of the windows. I change this to 1 to 20. Now we can see on the floor plan that this one opens outwards, while the other window opens inwards. Let's mirror it. I click on it, then choose the mirror icon from the markers, then the mirror command. The handle is in. I reset the scale. Let's edit the window chamfer. I click on the window and choose local menu, wall connection, complex editing. It's important to select the window near the inner side, because if we select the near outer side, I will edit that. So I select it again, this time on the inside, and choose the previous command. The edit line now appears on the inside. I insert a node, as the line is straight up to the center of the wall, and then move the end point to the correct position. I accept with enter. I do not edit the other side, but simply mirror this one. I select the left side of the chamfer and then select the mirroring option. Done. This completes the processing of the geometry PDF. Now I will import a DWG file into the program. I will open a new project. Using File menu Import DWG, I select the file. I deal with the ground fold first, so that's the one I will choose. The preview appears. Here again, I need to set the unit of the measurement. For now, the correct unit is the meter. I accept it and then place it with the new drawing origin. Even though I placed it near the origin, the architect in the other program specified the reference point that is not near the building, so now the building is far away from the origin. We can correct this. The global coordinate system must be selected on the status bar. On the right, the running coordinates show the distance of the given point from the origin. A large distance from the origin can cause calculation inaccuracies. In addition, three other things can cause calculation inaccuracies. The second is an object far from the origin on the floor plan. The third is an element in the 3D view that is far from the model, such as a dimension, a line or a polyline. The fourth is when the coordinates of the perspective object are far away. Let's return to the first one. We just faced that the floor plan is far from the origin. In this case, I can use Edit Move Relocate Project Origin command to move the origin to the selected point in the drawing. I specify this point and accept it. The origin has been moved. We can also see that the distance is reduced in the running coordinates. Let's check the size of the drawing. I measure this dimension line and I see that I've measured the same, so there is no need to change it. Let's take a look at the layer manager. In the layer filters, we can see that the elements of the DWG file have been placed on separate layers, as we have seen with the geometry PDF. I will leave only the wall layer turned on, so the floor plan will be much more transparent. I will open the layer walk and select only the wall layer. I will start working on the plan. I can create walls using building walls was on DWG drawing command, or if I know the thickness, I can set the properties. I rewrite the thickness to 440 mm and save it as a new style. Let it be called one layered 44 wide wall. I activate it and use the wall command to draw around the floor plan. Since this is a vectorized drawing, the cursor is drawn to the specific points, so it's quick and easy to work with. I drew around the floor plan. Here at the corner window, I have to make sure that I do not choose the endpoint of the window, but the endpoint of the other wall. I can do this simply by using the guidelines or by holding down the shift to lock the direction and selecting the right point. I continue drawing. Here again, 
I have a corner window. I proceed as before. I'm back to the start point. I'm also installing the windows and making the corner window. First, I will place two windows. I select the option Place Window by two points and specify the two endpoints. I also place the other window. I select both windows and rewrite their distance from the wall to 170 mm so they are centered in the wall. From these two windows, I will create the corner window by going to the local menu, edit, join two openings on the wall corner command, and selecting the second window. The corner window has been created with the windows shifted to the wall corners, but their width has not changed, so this has to be modified. I click on the window and use the change size command to set the new width of the window. I do the same for the other one. Now I'm going to install the slab. First, let's look at its properties. We can adjust it if necessary. The base offset from the floor should be zero and the thickness is minus 300 mm. I can place the slab either in sketch mode or by walls. Now I place it by walls. I select the whole floor plan, then press Enter to accept it. In the 3D view we can see that the slab is placed. I go back to the floor plan and turn back on the other layers. In the layer manager I right click on the DWG layers and then select Unlock. This will make all layers visible. I go up to the first level and import the second DWG file which is the floor plan of the first level. After File Import DWG command, I select the DWG. In the preview, I have to specify the unit of the measurement. Here again, meters will be the correct one. I accept and place it with the new drawing origin. The same thing happened as with the import of the ground level, that the plan is very far away from the origin, so we have to correct it again. Even though, I exited the command. The floor plan did not turn black. In this case, I choose the View, Zoom, Redraw command to solve the problem. This can also be used if something disappears from the floor plan. So I need to correct the distance from the origin. I can't use the Replace Project Origin command here because then the floor plan on the ground level will slip. Therefore, I have to move the floor plan itself to the origin. I select it, then click on the Move marker and select the Move From command. I select the same point that I specified as the origin on the ground floor and then enter its coordinates, 0 space 0. I accept with Enter and the selected point on the drawing is moved to the origin. Let's check that the levels are correctly aligned. In the layer manager, I select the visibility of the ground floor level, while the first level is the active one. The ground level is then displayed as a tracing paper. We can see that they overlap properly. I turn off the visibility of the ground floor, then go down to the ground floor. In the layer walk window, I display only the layers containing the architectural elements, so the slab and the walls. I accept it. To avoid having to redraw the walls and the slab on the first floor, I select the floor plan and choose Copy to another level in the Level Manager. I choose the first level. In the 3D view, we can see that it has been copied to the first floor. This completes the processing of the DWG file. We will now look at the import of the IFC model. For this, I will open a new empty project. I choose the file Import IFC command. Choosing the first option, we open a new project file and the IFC model will be imported here. Then we can work on it. The second option is recommended to use if we are working on a project and we want to open a new window where to import the IFC model. As later on, we want to use or copy some of its part onto the currently opened floor plan. Using the third option, 
we import the object as IFC element. I now will choose the first option. Archline XP is IFC Coordination View 2.0 import certified design software. Thanks to this, we can get floor plans and 3D models at a higher standard from designer using other software like Archicad, Revit or Allplan. Importing IFC allows us to download real walls, slabs and other elements from a co-designer using another software, then edit them as real walls, slabs and other elements. Finally, we can pass on the completed plan as an IFC file to co-designers, so they can work on it with the convenience using another software. If we compare it with the previous DWG import, there we only imported a vectorized drawing, no 3D model. What we can also see is that the imported element has transferred the entire level and layer structure. Let's have a look at them. By activating the floor plan, I click on the level manager. The level structures created in the other software appear. We see a similar case in the layer manager. I switch to the 3D window and simplify the model by deleting the trees. In the meantime, let's go over what else we need to know about the model imported in IFC. As I mentioned, with IFC import, we got real walls, slabs and other elements and added them according to the type. More complex shapes such as roofs are converted to IFC elements. We can also modify them to some extent. Example is color, but not the angle of inclination. Let's make some changes to this model and see how we can do them. I'm going to change the height of this retaining wall. I click on it, select the top left node and use the change height command to modify it. Let's place windows on it. After the command place window, I select the wall and then place them. I select them and change their seal height to 1900 mm. Let's place another window in this wall using the same command. As we can see the window is placed but there is not a cutout even though it worked well before. I click on the wall and look at its properties. 3D fixing is enabled. This means that it has been fixed in the other software. If a wall is too profiled, it is an option to export it as an IFC element or to fix the 3D representation. If I turn this option off, the window cutout is already displayed. However, the height of the wall has changed. I can correct this by using the height adjustment command to pull it back to its original position. I can also create perspective, just like with Archline models. Let's look at an example. I create a view from here of the terrace. I save that and then I select the front view and create a view from upstairs. I can switch between views in the same way. Let's change the material of this wall. I click on it and in the properties menu I click on the interior color. Let this be the dirty orange one. I look for an outdoor pavement from the Design Center's material library. Let it be Bevel Pavel and apply it to the patio as painting. The IFC format contains the model itself, not the 2D elements on the floor plan. It may be that this floor plan was scaled and labeled, but these are not included in the IFC. Now we come to the last topic, importing Revit files. I open a new project and import the RBT file. BIM collaboration between architect is based on fast and easy model exchange. Revit RBT models can be used with Archline XP in two ways, conversion and linkage. Archline XP 2022 converts original Revit walls, slabs, columns and beams into Archline XP walls, slabs, columns and beams. All other elements are converted to IFC elements.
In addition, we can import doors, windows, objects and MEP equipment from RFA files into ArchineXP. I can import as a conversion using the file menu, import RFA RVT command and as a link using the link like RVT file command. I will now import as a conversion, so I will choose the import command and select the RVT file. This will be the same model that was in the IFC file. I need to choose which import setting I will work with. The first option is to import the file with empty settings, so it will be a clean imported environment where we will be to see better what the program has imported. The second option is to embed the it in Archline XP factory settings. I choose the empty setting. Depending on the size of the Revit file, it may take longer to open it. As I mentioned, the program converts the original Revit walls, slabs, columns and beams into Archline XP walls, slabs, columns and beams. The other elements are converted to IFC elements. The import does not retain references to the source model. At the end of the import, a dialog box displays the statistics of the imported items. Here we can see which architecturals and IFC elements have been imported. I press OK. Let's look at the 3D model. In case the Autodex material library is downloaded to the computer, the model will be displayed with textures. These textures are included in the Revit file for reference only. If we click on this architectural element, we can see that it is a wall. Let's look at its properties. We can see that this is a layered wall structure, and if we click on the layers of the wall, we can even edit them. We can also change the height of the wall and its materials. Revit family appear in the program and are available as archline styles with the same properties. Clicking on the wall tool in the side menu will display Revit families as styles in blue. These will also appear for all architectural structures such as slab. Another big advantage of importing Revit is that the level structure is also manageable. I show it in the Level Manager. We can also import doors and windows from RVT and RFA files into the program. For example, take a look at beamobject.com and let's download a door from here. You can also download objects from here only after logging in. I select the doors and filter them down to the Revit files. I choose the brand K-Line and download the fourth door. I go back to the program and start a new project. I use the file import command to download the door with the empty settings option. Here we also get the statistics of the imported items. I choose the 3D window. I right-click on the first door and choose Convert Object to Door Window option. I need to align the wall connection points to the corresponding points on the model. Clicking on them will automatically detect the endpoints and help us find the correct one. Follow the Help table on the right to determine the points. I save it to the library under the name K-Line 1 in the Outdoor Others category. This way I can save an entire product line. I also save the next door. I right click, choose convert object to door or window command, then set the connection points and save it to the library. Let's call it K line 2. Now I'm going to open a project, a model used in the visual design workshop. In it I will place the saved door. I activate the 3D window and from the Design Center I select Building, Door, Exterior, Other folder. I change the view and place the new door on this wall behind the dining area. I select the option, place it from wall endpoint, select the surface and then specify the door location. 
Clicking on the pencil icon, I can change its properties, including material, width, height, and other parameters. For more information on how to import Revit, RVT, and RFA files, I recommend another tutorial video that you can find on Archline XP website under Learn Tutorial Videos, Latest Tutorial Videos. Watch the video Open Revit RVT and RFA files. In it, we go into more detail on importing. Thank you very much for joining me for this video. I look forward to seeing you at the next workshop. Until then, have a lovely day. Bye-bye.